All right, hello everybody again. Um, I thought I'd do this uh, something on these uh, the battery bank I'm going to use for the bus, as well as uh, the inverter story. <laughs> I'll start with that. Um, this is the inverter out of the uh, the MC5, the other bus. Um, the Inverter I bought for this one, if you'll remember uh, from a couple of videos ago, the um, uh, it, it was mislabeled at the factory, and um, it was supposed to be a 240 volt, uh, six kilowatt. It was actually a 120 volt, kilo, six kilowatt. So wasn't what I ordered, wasn't what I wanted. Um, so I sent it back to Victor to um, uh, Ames and uh, they were going to uh, just send me a new inverter, the proper one, um, and that was all good. And then, of course, things went sideways. FedEx damaged it <clears throat> in shipment, so it arrived at Ames uh, factory damaged. So I had to make a claim with uh, FedEx uh, for uh, you know for the for the cost of it and because uh, it was damaged beyond uh, damaged beyond repair so anyway that's the story of that uh, I haven't got a check yet uh, it's you know still being processed but uh, you know it's all that's all fine the only problem is that I bought that inverter on sale um, a substantial uh, you know discount and uh, Ames you know they don't want they don't want to they don't want to honor that um, you know it's kind of it, it's uh, uh, everything that is sold you know I bought it on a Amazon sorry I'm if I'm stammering a little bit I'm just trying to <laughs> uh, none of this stuff is scripted anyways uh, so I I bought it on Amazon from a reseller, not directly from Ames. They don't sell directly to anybody. They, they sell through resellers. So, um, you know, they said that uh, I hadn't bought it from them, but, uh, you know, they would, they wanted to, to make sure that I got the, what I had ordered. However, they didn't know that I, you know, the, that it was on sale. So, you know, it was, I, I can't remember now, I think it was, almost 50% off, about 40% off, if I remember correctly, which is why I bought it when I did. Uh, you know, I didn't need it then, but I, you know, it was on sale, so I bought it. Anyway, um, so, you know, when they, you know, when I sent them the invoice of what I had paid for it, well, they didn't want to sell me another one at that price. So, anyway, so that's, you know, one screw up because, because, <laughs> well, you know, well, none of this is anybody's fault. Uh, other than the worker in Chinese in China that uh, happened to just you know mistakenly label that uh, you know the the inverter incorrectly, and that started the whole chain of of events. Um, but anyways, um, and I guess the moral of the story is whenever you buy something on online, Amazon, eBay, whatever. Make sure you open the package and what you get is what you ordered. Because um, Amazon, you know, the, re the company that bought it from on Amazon, they wouldn't, weren't interested in doing anything about it because it was over 30 days and their return policy is 30 days. Um, so whatever, it, it is what it is. So once I get the check for the uh, the original inverter, I'm going to have to uh, either just buy one and buck up the extra bucks, or maybe just wait until uh, wait until it's, see if it comes on sale again, which I, I may do because I can use this one in the meantime for for whatever I'm doing. So it's enough about that. It's uh, just one of those things. Like I say, the moral is just uh, whenever you buy something on Amazon or eBay or anything like that, open it up right away within you know so you can if it isn't right you can send it back to to uh, uh, wherever you got it from and and 
you know, make it right. If you do like I did and, and uh, just leave it, you know, the reason I did it, I just, well, I don't need it yet. I want to leave, you know, I just left it in the original packaging so nothing would get damaged and everything. But, you know, I guess in hindsight, that wasn't the greatest thing to do. So anyway, um, so on to the batteries. So the batteries are uh, two volt cells. They are, that's a 24 volt battery bank. Uh, it is 1110 amp hours. Uh, so that makes about 550 usable amp hours down to 50%. Um, it is off one of our barges. We use uh, big battery banks and inverters on the, on the uh, barges for uh, running nav lights and that sort of thing while they're in, um, while they're uh, being, uh, they're on a voyage. So that's, and, and you know, that once they start to uh, lose capacity and that sort of thing, um, we can't take chances on, you know, on, on equipment that's starting to age. So we just change them out. So this battery bank came off one of our barges. We used it at our facility for a little bit as an emergency um, as a, to run the emergency security system uh, in case of power outage. Uh, so it didn't really get used, but it wasn't maintained either. So that was the problem. Um, it had, you know, it hadn't been, the, the water level hasn't, hadn't been, hadn't been uh, checked. And so it was uh, way down on water and the cells were exposed about half the cells like the the basically it was half full of of liquid uh, and um so <clears throat> i we we changed it out we we put a um a different battery bank in and we were just going to scrap these and then i went well I'll, you know as long as i can get them to come back to a, a usable capacity so that um i can you know it makes sense to pack 1200 pounds of batteries around uh then i'll i'll do it so i thought i'd give it a try and see what happens and um you know one thing about about the you know the company i work for the batteries don't get they don't never get desulfated they you know which we check um uh, the um uh, specific gravity all the time that's what one of the maintenance checks and that kind of thing and but they don't get uh, desulfated they don't get equalized they don't none of that kind of stuff so you know I thought I'd give it a try and uh, this uh, inverter has a desulfation uh, setting on it so uh, basically what I did is I put uh, I filled it with uh, with water uh, the only thing that evaporates is the uh, the water. The, the acid still stays in there. And I thought I'd give it a try. So went through a few charge cycles, charged it slowly and and, uh, and that, and then uh, put a load on it, desulfated it, uh, you know, after I'd uh, gone through a couple of cycles. And uh, the first charge cycle, I got uh, 70 amp hours out of. Uh, so, you know, basically nothing. <laughs> and uh, you know I didn't know if it was going to come back or not uh, I've, I've worked on it for uh, a couple of weeks now charging desulfating all that stuff and I've got it up to uh, my calculations come out to about 970 amp hours so it's come up substantially more than I thought uh, I thought it was going to come up to you know I would have been happy with 50 percent but um, it's come it's uh, when they were new 1110 amp hours I've got it up to like I say, eh, 950 to 970, somewhere in that neighborhood. Um, so I'm happy with that. So it makes it worthwhile to uh, to install them in the bus. And, uh, you know, eventually, one day, I would like to uh, build a, uh, a lithium battery bank. Um, but it's just not in the... Right at the moment, I have other more important things to do. So this will work. And uh, the price is right. <laughs> so... So I'll use it, and um, you know, there's lithium is is expensive. It's I mean, it's ultimately it's the only way to go. But uh, you know, it's a lot of money up front, and uh, I have other places to to spend that right at the moment. So um, there's a couple of uh, well, three that I can think of um, channels that have done 
really nice jobs of lithium battery banks and um, you know I'd if anybody's interested in that uh, one of them is uh, is um, RV Exodus uh, you can he's got a really nice uh, series on on the uh, uh, battery bank and in, an inverter setup that he put into his uh, fifth wheel trailer um, if anybody's interested in that so that's a really good one um, another one is uh, beginning from this morning that's their uh, their, their channel uh, Juan and Michelle they do uh, they've done a, a really nice job of uh, building a, a system a lithium system out of a Nissan Leaf battery bank um, and so that's that's a pretty good series as well on you know uh, on, on that and the last one I don't even know if it's there anymore because he's kind of dropped off but uh, RG RV what was it now RV chief Prevost is his channel and uh, he re man or redid a, a, a Prevo um, uh, Prevo bus and he put a big uh, Victron system in his um, so those are all three uh, different different ways of getting to the same goal and they're all really good uh, series so if anybody's interested in in that um, you can go there and, and watch them um, so that's about it this is one of the battery just one of the battery uh, chargers that I started with on this um, uh, before I put the before I pulled the inverter out of the out of the bus um, and it it got the the uh, got the battery started again, and uh, this I'll, I'll put this into the bus on the uh, on the uh, charging. It'll it'll charge the starting batteries. So um, that's where that will go once I you know install it in the bus. Anyhow, um, yeah, I'm going to install these in the bus one of these days. Uh, I got to get some material to build a battery box and all that stuff. So. It'll be a little while before I do that. I think I'll probably end up just installing this inverter into the bus. It's a four kilowatt, uh, but I'll put it into the bus until I get the, the the inverter that I wanted. It's not really being used in the other bus anyways, other than to keep batteries charged. So <laughs> I'll uh, I'll uh, install it in this one for now, and then and then. Uh, do the uh, do the swap it's the same uh, the same size and bolt patterns for mounting and all that kind of stuff so I can uh, you know just unbolt one bolt it back in and I'll stick this one back into the MC5 once uh, once I've done that so anyway hope you enjoyed the uh, the uh, this whole thing um, and uh, I'll get started working on the bus again <laughs> See y'all later. And I guess while I'm on the subject of inverters, um, I've had a few people asking me why I wanted to use the 240 volt split phase inverter as opposed to a 120 volt uh, in the first place. So I thought I'd address that. Um, the bus here, I'm going to put a all the appliances are going to be household appliances. So, uh, you know, the washer dryer will be a 240 volt unit. Um, the I'm going to put a small 24 inch uh, built in oven, which will be 240 volt and a glass uh, flat glass cooktop, which is also 240 volt. So uh, I want to be able to use that while we're traveling uh, not that I'm necessarily gonna be dry running the dryer while we're traveling but the the uh, alternator on this on the bus is big enough to run um, you know some pretty good size appliances so and the inverter will be six kilowatts so you know it'll you'll be able to heat up some water or you know whatever you want to do while while traveling so and also the hot water heater will be 240 volts as well so um, so that's why I'm using the 240 volt as opposed to just a 120. Um, the um, and then when I'm I'm going to try and build something uh, so that if I'm at an RV park that doesn't have 50 amp service, um, I will. My plan is to try and build something that will 
you know draw less than 30 amps uh i don't know something like maybe a two horsepower motor and uh running a 24 volt alternator or something like that so that i can charge just charge the batteries uh off the 30 amp service and then run the inverter to power everything and uh, you know the amount of time that you're using a lot of power is pretty pretty minimal as compared to you know the amount of power that you can charge in a day just just running it like that i don't know if i'll do it that way i might uh find some you know a big 24 volt uh battery charger that'll that'll do the same thing i don't know it, it's just something I'll, I'll work on in the future but um that'll give me 240 volt um power while i'm at an rv park that doesn't necessarily have uh 50 amp service and then you know if i'm on the road somewhere or whatever need to well i could just fire up the generator but you won't want to be firing up a generator in an rv park they kind of tend to frown on that for some reason i'm not really sure why but anyhow that's the plan um how that'll all work out in the end i don't know but but that's uh that's where i'm shooting for for now anyways and then that'll allow me to use all my my 220 volt or 240 volt uh, appliances even though I don't necessarily have 240 volt power available at an RV park. So anyways, I thought I'd uh, explain that a little bit. So I will uh, now get working on the, uh, on the bus again. <laughs>